Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N R Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020 edition. Always make sure that this, this book is in front of you as you and I are doing the work. Today we'll solve some problem that you will find on page number 474. As you can see, the very first problem on page 474, number 18 is already on the blackboard. There are two problems on the page, number 18 and number 19, and both of those two problems deal with the same information that appears on the top of the page, which you will find right here. If at the end of the video, as I always tell you, you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as a tutor to help you get ready for the exam, for the math portion, also the grammar portion which has to do with writing and also with the vocabulary. I can help you with all of those areas. Simply send me an email at Keshwani Prep, that's P-R-E-P, Keshwani Prep at iCloud.com or you can visit my website KeshwaniPrep.com. Let's take a look at it, see what it says here. So here apparently we have, we, have, we have a cereal, we have a box of cereal and we are told that each each, each ser ser serving size is three thirds of a cup, three quarter of, not three thirds rather, three quarter of a cup, three third would be the whole cup. Each serving size is three quarter of a cup and we are told that each serving provides us each serving of crunchy. Because down the road in the problem we'll deal with the second kind of cereal so I want to keep them separate. The, the, the one we're starting out with is called crunchy which I'm going to use simple C's to represent it, crunchy. Each serving has 210 calories. We are told that out of those 210 calories, 50 of them are fat calories. 210 must be others. Each serving also tells us, provides us 180 milligram of potassium, which apparently provides 5% of our daily allowance. All right, so far so good. Let's begin the problem. It says P% percent is provided by X serving. P% percent is provided by X serving. The question simply is, how do you express P in terms of X? Very simply, by setting it up as a ratio. Setting up, set up as a ratio, percentage, and the number of servings, and the number of servings, and we know that 5% is provided in each serving. Each one serving, each one serving provides 5% of our daily allowance. So instead of, instead of one serving, if we were to take X serving, X serving, we are told, will provide P percent it says that P percent is provided by X serving. So P percent provided by X serving. We want P in terms of X to so just cross multiply and we're done. P must equal, P must equal 5 times X. And that's all there is, which makes perfect sense if we stop and think about it instead of making so much fuss about it. If we had simply thought about it logically, it makes perfect sense because if one serving, if one serving provides us 5 percent of the daily allowance, two servings will provide 5 times 2. 3 servings will provide 5 times 3 and therefore x serving will provide 5 times x percentage of our daily allowance. That's all. Let's do number 19. We cannot erase the top part because we need the information. So let's do this part, 19. In 19, in number 19 as I just told you, they introduce a new cereal. They're calling it super, super cereal. And we're going to mix the super and the crunchy together. So in number 19 we're going to mix Crunchy and super. In such a way, we're going to mix them. We're going to mix them in such a way that we get two hundred and seventy calories per cup. Per one cup serving will have not per one cup serving. Serving is three quarter of a cup, but per one cup each cup we want to we're going to mix the two cereals in such a way that we have exactly two hundred seventy calories in every cup. The question is how much how much how much s should we mix with c? I don't know why I wanted to put it in parentheses. It shouldn't be in the parentheses because that is the that is the question. How much? How much else do we need in one serving? Let's get going, shall we? Okay. First thing first. First thing we have to remember is that 
this thing that is given to us, 210 calories, we must keep in mind that it is for 3 quarter of a cup, it's not for the entire cup. So let's figure that out, this part here, for the crunchy part, for the crunchy, what we're told is that 3 quarter of a cup, 3 quarter of a cup gives 210 calories. We don't want to figure out how many calories we have in 3 quarter of a cup, we want to figure out how many calories we have in a whole cup. We already know how many calories we have in the super, super gives us 270 right here. Uh, oh sorry, I haven't told you that part yet. Super does not give us 270. I left out something very important. They tell us somewhere in the problem that super gives us 240. Super gives 240 calories in a cup. I left that out. I don't know how that happened, which is why it's important that you have the book in front of you so you can read the bloody thing yourself. There you go. Okay, let's figure out how many how many calories in one cup here. So we have three quarter of a cup, we don't want three quarter of a cup, we want one cup, so let's multiply this part by four over three. And if you're gonna multiply this by four over three, we must multiply this part by four third. And now one cup gives us, let's figure out how much. Three goes into 21 seven times, and then we have a zero, 70, 70 times four. It looks like, it looks like crunchy gives us 270 calories in one cup. And looks like the super, not looks like, we are told the super gives us 240. Let's mix them together. Let's mix them together, we're going to make one cup, okay? So, let's have each, each cup, each cup of, uh, of currency gives us 280. So if we have C cup, C is the number of cup for, for, for currency, small C that is. It's, not, it's technically it's not it's not going to be number of cup because we're only making one cup mixture. It's going to be the proportion of a cup. 280 times C plus the other one gives us 240. Where where was it? Right here. It should be 240. The other one gives us 240. And how many cups of that we're going to have of the super? This is the crunchy. And how many cups of super are we going to have? Well, we're only making one cup. So if we have C cup out of that one cup of Crunchy, we must have 1 minus C of the super because this plus this has to add up to 1 cup in such a way that finally we have 270 calories. 270 calories all together in 1 cup. Let's find out what the value of C must be. That's all. Now keep in mind that we are not actually interested in C. We are solving for C right now but they, what we are looking for is S. We must remember that. So at the end, when we find this thing, C is going to be one third or one half or one eighth or whatever it is, it's some proportion of one cup. We have to subtract that amount from one to figure out how much super we have. Let's, let's get going. Enough of the talk. 280C plus 240 minus 240C equals 270. 280 minus 240 is going to be 40C equals 270 minus 240 is 30. There you go. So C is equal to 30 over 40. It's going to go away. So C is three quarter. If C is three quarter of a cup, that implies this implies that S must be one quarter of a cup. This is how we're going to mix it. We're going to have one quarter of the super crunchy, a uh, super super cereal, not super crunchy, super cereal, and three quarter of a crunchy cereal. Damn, it's difficult to keep them separate. The names. There is no super crunchy. Super is one type, and crunchy is the other type. Okay, that was it. Enough of that. I had enough of it. The next problem, there are three problems based on this information. The next problem is very straightforward. The next problem, number 20 says, which graph, which graph gives fat calories from crunchy? Now remember we were told that each one serving, each one serving of currency gives 50 calories of 50 fat calories 50 fat calories and that's it each one serving gives us 50 calories so before we even look at the answer choices so 
they give us they're giving us four graphs and our job is to identify which graph depicts the number of fat calories we're going to get from crunchy before we, before we even worry about looking at the graphs let's just draw our own it's very straightforward obviously it's going to start from here this is the number of servings this is the number of servings and this is going to be uh, the fat calories and of course if you take no serving you ain't going to get no fat uh, fat salary you know? fat calories don't ask me where that came from if you have one serving one serving is give us 50 calories two servings is going to give us 100 calories and so on and so forth one serving is going to give us 50 calories two servings is going to give us 100 calories and so on and so forth it is a slope of 50 if you take three servings, you're going to get 150. It has a slope of 50, as I said. That's what it is. The graph is going to look like this. It's going to start. It's going to start at the origin, and just going to continue. Obviously, each each additional serving that you consume, you will have 50 ca fat calories, and that is answer choice A. That is answer choice A. All the other graphs that they show you, they are ridiculous. For example. In answer to YC, the way the graph is depicted with a downward slope, first of all, it makes it look like you're going to have fat calories even if you don't consume any cereal at all. And then afterwards, each time you have one serving, apparently some fat calories are burned. They disappear. It's just silly. Number 21. Number 21. Number 21 says that h of x is an exponential function. We are told that y is equal to h of x and we are told that this function has y intercept of d where we are told d is constant. And our job is to identify uh, which of these four functions that is given to us must be true. Number 21 we are at. Which of the following could be true, not must be rather. Which of the following could be the function that is that we have in this situation. Now instead of worrying about the fact this is an exponential function and my God, what, it, what must it look like, what, what must an exponential function look like, don't worry about any of that. We have a very useful information here. This, this information is here for a reason. We are told that this function y has a y-intercept of d. Y-intercept of d simply means that when, when x is equal to 0, y must equal, must equal d. This is what they tell us. That's what y-intercept means. Whatever the function is on the y-axis, this on the y-axis, x is equal to 0 here. It's somewhere there it cuts at d. When x is equal to 0, y must be d. That's what this means. And that's all we need here to figure out what the right answer is. For example, let's look at the first one. First one says that h is equal to negative 3 d raised to x. Negative 3 d raised to x. So stay with me in the story. When x is, when x is 0, put in x equal to 0 here, negative 3 d raised to 0, any number raised to 0 is just 1 any number raised to 0 is equal to 1, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and it is not equal to d. We are told that when x is 0, y must equal d. In other words, here, h of x here, which is ui, y here equals, equals, equals negative 3, it does not equal d. a is not the answer. Because when x is equal to 0, it turns out that the y equals negative 3, not d. Let's look at d. B says h of x equals 3x d. Again, the same situation. Substitute the value of x, 0 for x. 3 times 0 times d will equal 0, and 0 does not equal d. Again, same exact situation. y is equal to h of x, and y must equal d. But y does not equal d, it equals 0. That is not correct. 
let's look at HYC. HYC says h of x is equal to d times negative 3. It goes much faster if you just do it on your own instead of having somebody explain every single step. It goes much faster. Again, you see very quickly, you can see, I mean, x is equal to 0, 0 raised to 0 cube is 0, 0 times anything is 0, it's just 0. It does not, this equals 0, it does not equal d. I'm not going to actually plug it in here. You can see here, when you put in, when you put in x equal to 0, 0 cube is going to be 0, 0 times d is 0, it does not equal d. Let's look at d. d says h of x equals d times 3 raised to x. h of x equals to 3 times 3 raised to d times 3 raised to x. So let's plug in 0 here. So we're going to have d times 3 raised to 0. There you go. By golly. Any number raised to 0 is 1. Any number raised to 0 is 1. I hope you knew that. And therefore d times 1 is equal to d which is exactly what it's supposed to be. y is equal to d when x is equal to 0. y is equal to d when x is equal to 0. Well, just, just based on the information that we have on y-intercept, there is more than sufficient to look at the right answer. Let's look at the next one, number 22. Number 22 says that we have we have weights of 15 horses. Weight of weight of the lightest horse. was actually 10 pound less than what was recorded. The question is which of these four which of these four quantities will be unaffected as a result of this? Mean, median, range and standard deviation. It's a very straightforward, very simple problem. So what is going on here is that apparently you're running a stable. I think it's a, let me just look at it. Stable, that's right, with a B. I wasn't sure about the word. So the place where you keep horses. So you're running a stable and in it you have 15 horses. You own 15 horses and you weigh every one of, weigh every, every one of these horses and you you made a record of it and after you finished recording it, the 15, 15 weights, you calculated their mean and the median and the standard deviation range and all of that and at the end of the work you realize that one horse, which happened to be the lightest horse, actually his weight was recorded, what was recorded was actually 10 pounds more than what it should have been. He's 10 pounds lighter. The question simply is, does it affect the mean? Does it affect the mean? The answer, of course, it, of course, it affects the mean because the mean is the sum of the weights divided by the number of horses. And one of the horses is 10 pounds less. So obviously it affects the mean. Does it affect the range? Of course the range affects it because the range is affected because the range is simply the highest minus the lowest. And the lowest all of a sudden is 10 pounds lower than before which means that the range has gone up by 10 pounds. As a result of this error, the actual range is 10 pounds higher than what was recorded because the lowest horse the lightest horse rather is 10 pounds lighter. Therefore the difference between the highest and the lowest is 10 pounds more. It is affected. Is standard deviation affected? Of course standard deviation is affected because standard deviation measures deviation from mean. So standard deviation here is definitely affected for two reasons. One, because the average has changed. As a result of this error, the average, the, we did not use the correct average in calculation of our standard deviation. The average has changed which means the deviation of each of the observation from the mean has to be redone because the mean itself has changed. That's one reason. And the second reason is that the deviation from the mean of the lightest horse is much larger than what was recorded because lightest horse was 10 pounds lighter. Anyway, 
you get the idea. What is not changed here is the median. Median will not be affected. Median will not be affected because uh, lowering lowering the lowest lowest value or or increasing the highest value or both for that matter. If you have number of observation, if you have number of observation and you arrange them in order from the lowest to the highest and then all of a sudden you lower the lowest value, whatever the lowest value is, you make it even lower, it will have no, no impact on median. It will have no impact on median because median is simply the middle observation. Middle observation, whatever the middle observation was, will remain the same. Whatever the value of the middle observation was, will remain the same just because the lowest one is lower than before, doesn't change anything, it doesn't change the fact that, that that one is in the middle. Same thing, increasing the highest value does not affect the median. Nor does it affect the median if you lower the lowest one and increase the highest one at the same time. What, what is affected is the range when you do that. What is affected is the mean. What is affected is the standard deviation, but the range does not, does not, uh, does not get impacted. The answer is C, or rather, the answer is B as in B as in boy. That was number twenty-two. That was number twenty-two, and I think, I think I'm going to stop right here. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll pick up from where we left off at number twenty-three, and we're continue, we're going to continue our journey. As I said before, if you wish to get hold of me, you can always reach me by sending me an email at kashwaniprep at iCloud.com. Alright? Fine now. So the answer here was B. Number 22. Bye now.